What is up everyone? So today is going to be an awesome day because today I'm going to share with you on how to create cinematic footages. Watch me Just follow every So a lot of you have been asking me you know, on how to improve on your videos, how to improve on your footages and how to shoot more cinematically. Is that even a word? So today I'm just going to share with you on what I think on how to create better looking footages all in all. So it's going to be a juicy one. Let's begin. Alright, so the very first key to achieving cinematic footages is stabilization. So this is very important. As you already know, if you watch jittery or shaky footages, it's just going to cause your head to explode and it's just unwatchable to watch shaky footage. So, so just make sure that your videos are stable and the ways to achieve it is first of all, right off the bat is to have either in-body stabilization on your camera system or stabilization in your lens itself and, and that would you know right off the bat help you to stabilize your footages from the get-go without you doing anything else personally i feel that in-body stabilization is a lot better than lens stabilization because um, in that way it's a lot more flexible any lens that you put on your camera already will be stabilized so that is super useful when it comes to run and gun filmmaking. Alright, so you will find yourself in many situations like this when you have to shoot handheld. Okay, and usually handheld um, stuff is not encouraged because it, it looks very shaky like this but I'm going to teach you one technique that's super super useful. Okay, and that is when you shoot handheld, you have to lock your elbows when you shoot like this. When you lock your elbows, you kind of become the gimbal itself. And you can see, it's a lot more smoother. And what is moving is actually my shoulders. So my shoulders is the point of contact when it's moving and my elbows are not moving. And this will allow you to have more stability when you shoot handheld. So after the handheld tip, um, the next thing to stabilize your footages is to use equipment that helps stabilize the cameras. You're talking about tripods, steady cams, uh, motorized gimbals, all that kind of stuff that will help you stabilize your footages. And that kind of leads us to the next key, which is camera movement. So camera movement is super crucial uh, when it comes to making your footages stand out that makes it more compelling and engaging. And there are various ways to do camera movements and the very first one, which is personally my favorite, is the steady cam movement. So th basically this is a stabilized camera movement where you can either track your subject forward or from behind or you can do rotating shots around your subject. So of course we have you know the crane, the jeep which gives um, a kind of look to it where you know you can either elevate your shots from bottom to the top or top to bottom. We have the slider shots um, which I use sometimes but I only use slider shots for let's say my music videos or for short films um, where it's a little bit more linear. It's not as dynamic but it's useful for um, different kinds of videos. So another type of camera movement that I like to use is to focus rack. So if your camera um, has a manual lens that you can you know turn the manual focus ring um, I like to use it to bring attention to another subject so I would focus from one object to another subject and again it makes your footage a lot more dynamic when you have that kind of movement and last of all we have the handheld movement which is also personally one of my favorites and I'm going to share with you one tip on how I make my handheld movements um, a little more cinematic a little more dynamic so what I do again same thing elbows locked together and this time around I'm not even going to sh uh, move my shoulders I'm going to just use my hips and my knees to rotate around say this GoPro that I'm filming can you see it's like a parallax rotation like a gimbal kind of effect slider whatever and what I'm doing is that I'm just moving my knees and rotating with the GoPro as a subject and there you have it, really it's um, very simple, you just need to practice in case of locking your elbows, keeping your shoulders intact and just really just moving your body. Yeah, golden tip okay. 
So the next key of achieving cinematic results with your videos is to have movement on screen. So um, what's happening in front of the camera is also as important as the one operating the camera. So for example, if you put your camera on the tripod, um, something interesting has to happen, right? So what I like to do with tripod shots is the, the most obvious way is to have a time lapse and that kind of like shows you the transition of time and it's, it's very dynamic. Um, time lapses always work as good transition kind of videos. So sometimes I like to run across the screen or the camera to showcase like the, the, the kind of gives you the perspectives of the grand scale of the location that I'm at. All right, so the next key would be to have a good eye for composition. So um, this eye kind of takes time for you to develop and even as I speak now, I'm still trying to improve on my composition and eye for photography. And one very good way to improve on that is basically to take lots of pictures and shameless plug over here you know you can hit over to my instagram page you know to, to see my photos and uh, how i practice photography so and what i mean by composition is basically you know the usual stuff like the rule of thirds where to place your subject and how to frame your camera properly make sure there's you know enough head space but not cutting away the head too much and placing your subject either on the right a third or the left third, all that kind of stuff. You talk about leading lines, um, make sure that your lines are symmetrical and pleasing to the eye. All that kind of stuff would help you to uh, make your footage just a lot pleasing to watch and aesthetically pleasing. So the next key would be to keep your shots clean, as clean as possible. Um, remove distractions that don't matter to the shot um, with no purpose. So let me show you an example of how to keep your shots clean. As you can see in my shot, right, like it's so messy. There's like, you know, the pile of clothes there and that. It looks so ugly, right? What you can do is to reframe it. Maybe go a bit more close up. You can see again, there's the fan. Maybe like this. So that you see, can, you can see the lines are at least more visually pleasing. It's more symmetrical. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is probably one of the most important aspects of photography and cinematography. Cinematography, cinematography is lighting and time of the day. I won't talk about controlled lighting. I'm going to talk more in the context of travel filmmaking and that's where the time of the day matters the most. You want your lighting to be as soft as possible. So timing of the day matters a lot. So basically you want to avoid shooting in direct sunlight which occurs most probably at noon time where the sun is above you and the skies are clear and it creates very harsh shadows to your subjects it's not flattering at all and your subjects would try to squint because the sun is so bright and so the best times of the day to shoot in is always sunrise and sunset so these two times are the best times to shoot the most flattering footages and it's the time for you to just exploit and shoot as much as possible if you can because during sunset or sunrise which we call golden hour for you know photographers and you know the sun is golden it's orange and amber it's it's beautiful the colors are beautiful you can create silhouettes it just makes your footage just a lot more magical you know what i mean like so i just wanted to add on to one more thing and that is um when you travel and you want to shoot during sunset or sunrise it's always good to check um your weather app in your phone on the, the timings of the sunrise and sunset because um you want to hit there early you want to buffer enough time I would say one hour before sunset or sunrise and so that you have enough time to just exploit that one hour you get really really good lighting out of that one hour so yeah all right so the next thing to make your footage cinematic is the use of slow motion okay slow motion is awesome slow motion makes all your footages a lot more dramatic and cinematic and um, yes, I love to use slow motion, but again, I use it in moderation and it's great to portray emotion, great to portray action and that kind of stuff. So yeah. Okay, so this next one is a very simple technique that you can use um, when editing your videos in post-production and that is the use of black bars, right? Adding black bars to your footages. It again, naturally just makes things a lot more cinematic for some reason. I have no idea why, but it makes it look like you're watching in the cinema. So um, again, I do not recommend you to use this all the time for all of your videos. Just use it wisely. So how I do this in post-production is um, I would use uh, my editing software which is Premiere Pro. I would add this video effect called Crop 
and just add it to my videos and I will crop the top and bottom by about say 7% so that I don't crop too much of my frame it's not too much and it's not too little next up bokeh alright so uh, any footage with bokeh lots of bokeh is naturally very pleasing to the eye and so that's why a lot of people still choose mirrorless cameras or DSLRs over like using an iPhone because an iPhone has limitations on, on bokeh especially when it comes to video all right so when I shoot with my camera I like to use prime lenses if I really want to emphasize on bokeh and aesthetics and um, this is the prime lens that I own the Sigma 50mm art series f1.4 so this can really provide a very shallow depth of feel to your shot. It just makes things look so beautiful and so creamy with the, the low aperture that you can go down. And shooting with prime lenses just gives you uh, more detail in your shots, better colors. And for my travel videos, I just use it kind of like sparingly whenever it's needed, whenever I want to shoot like aesthetic shots or shoot like portraits. And the next key would be to shoot in a flat or neutral profile. In your camera settings okay this can be applied to any camera system that you use the general rule of thumb when you are shooting is to always tone down your camera settings avoid shooting in standard profile where everything is baked into the camera in terms of sharpness saturation and contrast because what your camera does when you bump up the sharpness is not add more detail to your shots okay it's just going to outline those edges a little bit more and it just creates that artificial look which is very ugly my advice is to bring down your camera sharpness all the way to zero okay and then you can just add the sharpness in post it looks way better like that same for contrast so i tend to bring down contrast a little bit so that in post production you have more leeway to play around with for saturation same thing all right so we are down to our very last key and that is to tone down your color grading all right same thing same uh, rule applies people tend to bump in a lot of saturation contrast and you know throw in their filters to the maximum intensity when they are color grading in post-production and generally um, it's not going to look good when you try to put too much into your color grading and it's always good to tone it down make it subtle and um, i'm not going to try and go too much in depth into color grading because that's a whole new topic altogether which i will put out in the future so stay tuned for that all right and we are done um, i hope you found all of these tips useful and remember the key thing is that gear does not matter that much okay it's about applying these concepts to your filmmaking and really just keep practicing keep learning and keep repeating the process and eventually your videos will get better all right so give me a thumbs up if you found this video useful it really really helps and let me know in the comments on what other stuff you like to know or what other tips you like to learn from me and i will go through all of it and consider them for the next tutorial so don't forget to subscribe and join in the right for more videos like this and I will see you in the next one. Ciao. Bye.